There are over 400,000 children in foster care in the United States. It's a very uncertain time for them and those who want to become a foster family. Joining us now to clear up some common misconceptions, we have Mrs. Central States 2020, Ashley Ray. Ashley Ray, thank you so much for joining us today. I know we're having some problems with Skype, so I hope that it's working out. It looks like we may have you. Hi, Ashley Ray, how are you doing? Can anybody hear okay, me? Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, I was like, I know we're going to oh. make this work. <laughs> you know, it's Monday oh. and it's a scramble, and uh, but I'm glad we can hear you. So we have you on the phone and also we can see you through Skype. So uh, an important Perfect. topic uh, to talk about. I know that you had five common misconceptions that you wanted to visit with us about, uh, especially when it, com when it comes to foster care. Yes, absolutely. So sorry, I'm on my phone right now, but you're right. We've been having some technical difficulties this morning, so I was in a scramble. Um, but yes, there are there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to foster care, but there are five that we were just going to touch on this morning. One of them is that foster parents are quote unquote replacements for birth parents. And right now, um, May, of course, is National Foster Care Month. And there's a new campaign right now called Support to Families, Not a Substitute for Parents. And I think that's just so important to remember that um, us as foster parents are here to care for these children while their birth families get back to a place where they can hopefully be to welcome their children back into their homes. So we're here to care for the children while also supporting the families. Um, yes, we are mom and dad to those children while they're in our care, but we're not here to replace their birth parents. We're simply here to care for them and to support their families while they're here, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And number two on your uh, list of five today, I think this is a good one for you to kind of break down for us as well. Birth parents are bad parents. That doesn't necessarily mean that's always the case. That's a, a misconception, correct? Yes, it is. And yes, we do see, you know, two of the most common reasons why children are taken out of their home and put into foster care is because of abuse and neglect. A lot of parents, yes, are maybe um, incarcerated or they're addicts, but that's not all parents. And there are many scenarios that I can give you where the birth parents, for whatever reason, just are not in a good place right now to adequately care for their child. And so they need somebody to temporarily come in and provide that care for their child. Well, again, they can get back to where they need to be to, again, be able to provide their child with care, but they're not bad parents. And I think that's an easy judgment to make about these people that we maybe don't have that relationship or that human connection with. It's just so easy to judge people and to come to our own conclusions without understanding the, the true story behind it. And since we're talking about parents, the misconception with parents, I think it's a great time to talk about foster kids getting a bad rap as well. And that's on your list. It is, yeah. You know, foster kids are quote-unquote bad kids or damaged kids, and that's not the case. Yes, again, we see that a lot of the children coming into the system have experienced um, trauma of some type. So, of course, there's going to be some things that we need to address and deal with there. But foster children are not bad kids, and we hear that so many times. Oh, they must have behavioral issues, or they must have issues with this, or they must have issues with that. Well, you know what? Our foster kiddos that are in our care, yeah, they maybe have some unique situations that we're trying to work through, but our children uh, have have complications and they have struggles and they have things that they face just like these foster children do and so they're not quote-unquote bad kids or damaged kids they're simply kids that maybe have experienced something a little bit more intense or something that we maybe have never experienced in our life and they just need a little bit of extra care and attention to get through that number four on your misconception list foster parents can't work outside the home yeah and this is a big one i think this is one of the fears that we have with people wanting to become foster families is because of the obligation that yes it does take time but you know what just like you maybe have your own children and you're able to work outside the home you can still work when you have foster children there's a lot of great support from the state with daycare and certain things like that um, and there's actually there's an organization called foster more and they have a foster care friendly workplace pledge that we really promote and encourage and so it's a chance for employers to go on they can sign this pledge showing that they 
They are a foster care friend, friendly workplace, really basically meaning that they support foster families. And again, it's no different than having your own children and still being able to work a full time job. Just because you have foster children in your care doesn't mean that that changes. And number five on your list, I find this one interesting. I guess I hadn't thought about it. A big misconception <laughs> is that you never get to see your foster children after they leave home. Absolutely. And no doubt, yes, there are situations where you maybe do not ever see them again. But there are many situations, just as many, um, where you are able to stay in touch with those children that were in your home, whether they go to another foster family or whether they get adopted or whether they go back to their birth family. A lot of the foster families, we have great relationships or cordial relationships with those birth families. Is it always the case? No, it's not. But there are many times where we're able to still maintain that connection, sometimes really close connections. I know of foster families who have been asked to be um, godparents uh, to some of their foster children after they've left their home. So that is not something that just because they're here, because we always hear, oh, it'd be too hard for me to let them go and to say goodbye. Yeah, that's hard. But there's many times where you're able to maintain that relationship with them and still see them grow into adults that are out there now living their own lives and doing their own thing. That's really an incredible uh, point to, to point out as well. And we talked about the numbers right away as I was introducing you. Just before we let you go, just talk one more time just about the need. If people are at all thinking maybe they could help out, the, the need is really there for foster parents and foster care. Absolutely it is. Like you said, there's about 437,000 U.S. children in foster care and only about 200,000 licensed foster homes on average, 30 to 60 percent of which drop out each year. And so there's this constant need for foster families to serve the needs of their children. And especially with what we're going on through right now with the coronavirus, and we talked about this on the last segment, there's just that increase in abuse and neglect that we're not seeing that's eventually going to have that ripple effect where these children are finding their way into the system. And so now more than ever, we're going to need foster families to step into these roles. And again, if not as a foster family yourself, there's so many other ways that you can support the foster community. Um, right now, North Dakota launched the Foster Parent Recruitment Inquiry query uh, toll-free line it's now active so you can call this number and we'll provide it um, I'll, I'll post it later um, but you can call this number and ask questions about foster care and foster parenting and that the process and the experience and really get a grasp on whether or not this is a good option for you and your family at this time and again if fostering isn't there's still ways to support the foster community Ashley Ray thank you so much and uh, your passion uh, we can definitely feel it, so it's an important conversation to have. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. We'll be right back here on North Dakota Today.